We're good. Hey guys. Howdy. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about Retro Toy Con. Yeah. Best show ever. Best ever. show ever. So why did I start Retro Toy Con? Why did you start Retro Toy Con? Okay. So there was a time where I was doing 20 to 30 shows a year as a vendor, because that's how I made a living. Because I used to run an online business, and when the economy took a nosedive, and the customers weren't coming to me, I had to go to where they were. So I started doing shows. And then one show led to another show, to another show, and hey, that's a good show, try that show. And then next thing you know, 30 shows a year, and I'm not home very much. And then that's what led me to do the brick and mortar and blah, blah, blah. But then I realized when you go to a toy show or a show or a Comic-Con, if you're a toy collector, you're looking for toys. And then you look around and there's not a whole lot of toys at these shows. And if there are, they tend to be what? (laughs) Funko Pops. Pops. Yeah. And that's not what I'm looking for. Now, some people may be looking for that, but I think I'm not the only guy who likes what I like. Because I like what I see. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) <laughs> you're wrong for that <laughs> so uh i said i'm gonna start a toy show and i know who all the good toy vendors are because i've been doing shows for so long i think i could convince them to give me a shot because it's hard to get vendors for a first year show it's hard to get attendees on a first year show yeah because yeah. a first year show tends to not be so well you know because nobody knows about it so so i set out to do all the things that I looked for in a show that I liked other people that, that other people did that I liked from a promoter standpoint. And then I saw things that I think promoters didn't do well or cheaped out on. Like when I do a show, I feel special or I feel a little bit more special when I have a lanyard. Yeah. And I have a badge, not a wristband. That's yeah. just my personal preference. It feels classier to me. And I like a smaller show. But it's quality over quantity. Right. Because I could fill a big hall. Believe me, I got a 30, 40 vendor waiting list. Right. But it's not then. Well, you, you're. If you have 150 vendors. They're all competing even harder against each other and they're not having They're not making... Well, I really like hotel shows. So we have the biggest space the hotel has. It's the biggest in Greenville. So there is nowhere to go that is larger unless I go convention center, which I refuse to do, even though they're courting me. Yeah. I like the fact that everything is self-contained and the ability to do the after-hours activities the dinners, the breakfast, the things with the guests that a traditional show doesn't do. It was adding these unique elements, these unique experiences you could do with the guests. I think this is going to be our sixth year. The dates are November 17th to the 19th. Mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday is the regular show. Friday is a preview night. We get asked a lot, what is a preview night? The preview night, is it like, does that mean we just get to look around, but we can't buy? And I was like, no, no, no. It's just, you get first crack at the dealer floor. You can buy as well. Uh, And then we do VIPs, which get in early, and they also get into the preview night. And then we do a VIP meet and greet, which means the celebrity guests will be at the VIP meet and greet. Mm -hmm. And it's just you and the celebrities, and it's a finite number. I mean, it's capped because of the size of the room. So you get that personalized one-on-one. Like last year, we had all the original Ninja Turtles. And that was a separate event. So we do Friday event. And that was the pizza Pizza party. party. Pizza party. Now this year, we're doing it with the X-Men cast from the original X-Men. Which a lot of them are voicing the roles for the new show that's hitting Disney+. 97. So it's X-Men 97, which some of the figures you know about that you're going to have to buy. Because you have to buy your Marvel Legends. Yeah, I have to buy more. I want to know what's cause turtles have pizza. <laughs> yeah, what do X Men eat? They're gonna eat pizza. Okay, because they love pizza. Pizza is good. I guess Wolverine can slice. Yeah. But now, so so that's the Friday night element. 
All right, that would be great. <laughs> he cuts the hey, hey, bub. Give him three pizza cutters. And then Saturday is the meet and greet. So all VIPs get the Saturday element, Friday preview night, early entrance, Saturday, Sunday. But then, so when the show floor ends on Saturday, the lobby swap begins. So then what is a lobby swap? Fun. Yeah. It's the hotel gives us access to the entire lobby for anybody to participate. And it doesn't cost you anything. So if you have a tote full of toys, bring it to the lobby swap, find a table, find a spot, find a chair, fan your toys out, and it goes on for hours. A couple hours, yeah. And then when that ends, there's a sign-up board for the room trading. And the room trading doesn't end. It could go on until 3, 4 in the morning. Yeah. So it then normally does. It's an open mm-hmm. atrium hotel. It's a seat, a glass elevator. You're going up and you're like, oh, wow, look at all the doors open on floor two. Let's stop here. And then just bounce room to room to room. And that room might be G.I. Joe. And that room's going to be Transformers. And there's wrestling in this room. And and then you go to the third floor and you go to the seventh floor. and Because we, we sell out the entire hotel. So that's another yeah. thing. If you haven't booked yeah. your room, you better do it. Book it discount rate online right you get free breakfast and you get happy hour so yeah. who could complain and every room's a suite so if you want to do room trading you set up the front portion of your room They're, so you're not got toys laid out on your bed yeah like at some other shows yep. it's in the front of your room not your bedroom and then yeah it's, it's and so crazy long. things are found double telescoping oh yeah Vader's, uh, Vader's. Luke's uh Last wave from Rambo, remember? Yeah. Yep. That was yep. a buddy of mine who owns a shop in California, Toy Fusion. He flew in from California to check the show out, and he's the one who scored those dollar Rambo figures, <laughs> Dr. Hyde and the really rare stuff. It's just crazy stuff. A room full of G1 and G2 Transformers still in package. Yeah. That, yeah, was, that yeah. was nuts. As many as you could, I mean, wall to wall. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, so you never know what you're going to see, and it's a true toy show. It's not a Funko Pop show. Just yeah. saying. So you, we enjoy because we don't even know what we're going to see. Exactly. It's. It, I think it's special, but obviously I'm biased. But I think that we have quality vendors bringing their best stuff. It's packed. You can't move. And it doesn't end. Because when the show floor ends, then the lobby swap begins. And then the room trading. it, And then there's parking lot deals. And it's just, it's, it's we, insanity. <laughs> we yeah. get people coming in the week after. Are you going to have a next year's show? And it's like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> but the big theme this year is we're doing, last year was the Turtles. This year is the X-Men cast. Yeah. And we have the husband and wife creative team who created the show. They're going to do a killer panel. And we're still not done with the announcement, so stay tuned. Andy. Yeah. Travis. Any stories from past retro? Past retro? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> um I mean, you guys know the story, but it's a good one. Um, so, turtles. Yeah, we were. I think we were in between lobby swap and heading into room trading, and I happened to hop on the elevator to go up to my room to change my shirt or something. And I get on there, and you know, next thing I know, uh, his name's escaping my mind, but the voice of Michelangelo, uh, Townsend, Townsend, Coleman. Townsend. Thank you. Um, floor stops. He gets on, and I'm like what's up dude and he just plays into it and the whole way up to my room it's just banter back and forth between him and i and michelangelo voices that's great and he's then, such a nice guy and then like oh, yeah. there was someone behind me and they were like when he got off they were like was was that michelangelo i'm like yeah he's here all weekend <laughs> <laughs> tip your waiter <laughs> but i mean so many like just cool things retro um the feel in general is just like not to sound hokey but the whole thing is like positive energy amongst like everyone like you don't see anyone in a bad mood you don't see anyone like angry or everyone's just happy to be there everyone's happy to yeah see things touch things look at things meet people it just it's i don't know to, you know not being biased but it's the best con i've ever been to I mean, toy-wise, for toy collectors, there's nothing better. I mean, you can go to other cons and, okay, it's Funko Pops. It's mystery boxes. Oh, look, they've got homemade wizard soap. Like, it, it's there's nothing like it. We don't have the space to afford. Right. It's got to be the best stuff. Right. Because I'm advertising a product. 
Wait, so you can't get wizard soap at the show? I mean, we had a guy who had, he advertised it was going to be vintage toys. And then he showed up and it was all bootleg Lego. Yeah. 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 And I was like, where's the toys? Oh, it's in another box or this and this is the box. And this, yeah, it's, I just, <laughs> it's all fake Lego, dude. You're not, you're not coming back. Yeah. It's just, I don't want bootleg Lego. and yeah. not telling anybody. And those are dime a dozen at every Comic Con. Yeah, I mean, like just the the sheer quantity of toys that are in that room. Oh yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> we there, we have buyers from California fly in just to buy. Yeah, it, 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 the amount of stuff. We had a a, a regular semi regular customer comes to the shop, <clears throat> and I don't know how many times. Let's just say like six or seven times he came in. Do you guys have you guys gotten the Kenner Knight Rider car? And each time it's like, we're still waiting on the same door. It's yeah. The driver's over door over. is always it's broken. The driver's driver door. And at the show, he walked by and he's got this huge grin on his face. And he, yeah, he's like, I had to tell you, look what I found. And I just realized like that just like made his month oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. Just, you know, and, and you can find all kinds of things like that there. And it's, it's so cool. It's like you said, you see, if you take the time, which I, I take a little bit of time. So I'm sitting down anyway. And just look at what people's expressions. Right. The interaction. It's right? Yeah. It's like it's both a little bit overload and just pure excitement. Yeah. And everyone's having fun. Yeah. You know, vendors, hotel staff, everybody. I've, I've had a lot of people tell me that it's. And the Turtles even said this. It was like a mom and pop feel. Yeah. But we did numbers like we were at a. A big con. Yeah. Because it's like a qualified buyer. It's not, I guess, looky-loos or... Yeah. Yeah. We're going to touch everything in your booth. And Tire kickers. It, it, I mean, they were there for the stuff. And if you brought the stuff, like if you didn't do well as a vendor, it was just because you, you didn't you, bring You didn't stuff. bring stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know. I uh, mean, like, I remember trying to help control their lines. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at one point, it was from the tables down the aisle, out the door to the lobby. Like, yeah. just people waiting in line to and the, and meet another these guys. Bonus to the venue is the fact that everything is so easy and so close. Oh, yeah. It's not like I got to walk 500 yards. Right. To, it's, it's, but, you know, but then again, the negative is it limits the amount of, because we have quality vendors that want to get in that right. cannot get in because there's just no more room. But it is what it is. I, yeah. I, 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 you know, and I like the way it is. It and keeps I it, like keeps it special. I like, you know, it's like let's just say it's the the best restaurant in town, and it's like, well, and there's you got to call six months ahead to get in. <laughs> well, why don't you just make the restaurant bigger? But but then it just it would lose its right. right. Special. What I made can't it special? Wait to go to the giant cafeteria place. It's Why don't so you just put five hundred tables in here, and then we could all eat? Yeah, that's, right. Well, it's not the same. The chef could only prepare so right. much for a certain the right. waiter. It's it's this is the way it has it, to be. It hampers the product. Yeah. And the thing is, and it's not like I, I need the show to make a living. The store is what makes yeah. the living. Yeah. This it's, is the show is, has to just be this way because that's the right. It's what makes it right. Yeah. The answer isn't always making it a bigger show because I've. I've been to, I've been to big shows and, and had a lot of fun and I've been to big shows and I'm, I want to go after an hour. Yeah. Cause it just, well, it but doesn't then, feel the same. But then it's relative to, do they have what you want? And yeah, a lot right. of these shows, you could have 500 vendors. Yeah. And three of them matter to me yeah. for what I'm looking for. But now if you're into, anime or in Funko or this or that, that then you're loving that show. And, and right. so, you know, we're a niche, like a really small niche market, but it, it's good. It's a, it's a good niche. It's, it's, you know, like I have some Funko, I'm not a Funko store. I mean, we're more action figure store. Yeah. But, uh, it's, yeah, it, it's, you got to experience it. Yeah. And then you'll realize it'll become your favorite show. Yeah. And, and I mean, like it's to me where it differs too is yeah, every convention's a weekend, three days, but like retro, if you're there, it's a whole weekend. 
Where another show, you may just, you know, pay to get in on a Saturday, walk around for a couple hours, and be, I'm done. And then you're home. And then you're home. Yeah, if you stay, like we even encourage all the people who are local to get a room and those who have listened, yeah, continue to get a room. Right. Yeah. And it's not like we make a cut off the room. Yeah, we, it's we, just we, a we, discounted we, rate. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you book the room, you don't book the room. It, it doesn't change anything, right? For me, but, but then you miss out on those. But you're, other the, elements. the extras. You're yeah. losing out on the full experience to where friendships are made. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I honestly think like the lobby swap is going to be nuts this year. Oh yeah. Well, like, I, I think <laughs> just because of the success of the channels had, the amount of people who were coming, right? Attendance in general. Right. I mean, it, David went to visit his brother and, you know, we know David from the show and David and Connor and yep. likes Transformers and Godzilla fanatic. And he went to visit his brother in Kansas. And then they stopped by a store and he had a retro toy con shirt on. And they're like, they knew him from the videos. Yeah. Yeah. And tried to get in as vendors. So they must have <laughs> had to talk to me. And I said, there's no space. Just, uh, yeah. And, Wanted to take pictures with him. They said, oh, we're rooting for you. We were fans of the show yeah. uh, in Kansas. Yeah. I, I will say, like, I do not wear Toy Federation or Retro Toy Con in public anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's at that point, right? You just kind of get flagged down well, when you I, might be shopping for groceries. <laughs> we, were, we were recording something up here late at night, and I went and grabbed pizzas. And the guy behind the counter is like, I watch you on YouTube. Yep. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. It's and, crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My customer uniform's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, Travis is oh, always oh, in his uniform. His gas attendant uniform. <laughs> Glasses Hey, on people need gas, man. I used to work at a gas station. <laughs> See? Full serve. Yeah, shut up, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Pump your own around here, fella. <laughs> they don't even have that anymore. No. Nah, nah. It's like ding, ding. And then you're sitting on the stoop, right? You're sitting on the corner. Mm -hmm. And then... There's always an old lady like in a Cadillac. You pop the hood, you check the oil, she hands you the credit card when you're filling it up. You have to take it inside and you get the, yeah, you know, yeah. the thing, you slide the it across, yeah, the paper she signs slide. it. Yeah, yeah, it was in Miami. That's right. It's, it's weird thinking about things like that that are just, they're gone. gone. Is there a full serve anywhere? But somebody told no, me in New a, Jersey not, or somewhere. Well, up north there is, have, right? Yeah. You cannot it's, it's, pump your own right, gas. Right. Not allowed. And I worked with this guy. His name was Russ. And he used to sit there with a knife and he would like clean his toenails. It was so oh, nasty. That's horrifying. <laughs> He'd literally sit there. Yeah. Pour a little gas on those too, please, sir. Yeah. I'll pay for it. <laughs> well, it got yeah. bigger. Yeah. It Yeah. Retro definitely so, yeah, got a lot. So yeah, from year one versus where we are now. I mean, we we did find a way to tweak the room to get more vendors in. Yeah. That slightly made the aisles a lot. Oh, they set up in the hallways. <laughs> it, it it slightly made the aisles a little bit tighter just a little bit well it, it it's i think it's like anything where it never starts as a complete success it has to grow well and, in the beginning and, and, it was difficult to get talent yeah mm. because there's a stigma with a first year show no matter yeah. who you are somebody you know i reached out to a guest who I won't name, who uh, was more than polite and said, look, I don't want you to be stuck with a burden of hitting my number because it's a first year show and I wouldn't want to do that to you. So, grow, you know, get it, get it going a little bit and then I'd love to do it. But yeah. And that might just been a nice way to say this could be a train wreck and it went nowhere. Yeah. yeah. And I got out of it. <laughs> Without damage. And then and I don't have to worry about coming again because well, it, there was no again. But it's, but it's a fair point. No, no, I get it. Yeah. And he, then a lot of it was the relationships that I formed doing the con circuit for so long. I was able to pull people through relationships with other people that made guests come, let's say, even our first year yeah. that I would have never gotten. Oh, yeah. 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 So, but that was... Cause like, this is a long, everything's a, a journey is, you know, if it was easy, everybody be doing it. Right. These, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. I got all these expressions. I would always hear my dad say, <laughs> yeah. he'd always say, if it was easy, everybody be doing it. Yeah. It's hard. 
it's hard to run your own business. It's hard to risk all your capital and everything on a, on a hope and, and it could fail and, and fail for a long time, but you still don't give up. But I, I, I had enough show experience to know what I wanted. And the first year the vendors did well, the guests did well, show didn't really make any money. Show yeah. lost, you know, being okay. honest. But it, it, it takes time. To, yeah. But if you keep doing it right and you satisfy the attendees and the vendors, because if your vendors don't come back, then yeah. they got to make money. That's why they're there. Right. So it was just doing all the check boxes and doing the things that I felt were important. And, and then never be afraid to advertise. I, I always firmly believe in that you know and some people say oh nobody listens to the radio anymore people still listen to the radio oh yeah gotta spend money to make money there's a lot of factories and plants here and bmw and michelin and all that and they got the radio fixed to yep. a station yeah, yeah. And, radio's and, still valid in that way right yeah. and then but you know but you gotta hit facebook and you gotta hit instagram and some people don't use facebook but there's a lot of people that still do yeah and then there's you know so yeah you gotta hit both you gotta hit everything yeah but yeah no there was a lot that we learned uh, and found a way to retweak the room to get more bodies or at least more vendors. More in. vendors. But yeah, but there's, yeah, we're, there's no more tweaking. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> I remember the first year being very hard for multiple reasons because it was scary putting a lot on the line and a lot of vendors, even though they were your friends, they were testing it out like anything else. Well, they were doing me a solid for the right, relationship right. I had with them. Right. But if it went south, they would kindly find a reason that they couldn't be yeah. at the next um, I got to visit my dad in right. Springfield, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> but my vendors don't leave and they want more space and yeah. I can't give them more space. Right. And that's, you know, but, you know. But we, I mean, we, we, we improved on, on so many things because- Thinking about the first year, it was like, it was so hard packing. Oh, right. <laughs> unpacking, packing again, and then unpacking. I remember that following week, I was just just beat because we we were doing everything kind of the hard way and we didn't have it all figured out. And, and I, now it's like clockwork. I'm so hands on that I, I don't, I'm pinballing in 500 directions at that show. I yeah. don't stand in one spot and then your phone will tell you how many steps you're doing. And it's like 10 miles or it was like, <laughs> it was nuts is I just don't stop. Then it's like, Oh, I'm in, you know, cause you're checking on everybody and everything and yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And, yeah. and it might be helpful to delegate. And then we do have, that's a big difference from the earlier oh, years. Yeah, is there's yeah. more help. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, that just, they have they their roles. Part of it. Right. And, and that's great because we have a lot of great people helping us out. And they just had to find the show. You know, that's why the another reason why the first year was a little tougher. Yeah. Um, but I I think it it was strange in a way the first time I noticed I was like three people in a row telling us they're looking forward to the show. And now it's it's pretty commonplace. But I remember that first time I was like, wow, that was three people in a row. I Three find, people in a row right. came up and had the same thought. I, I find it amazing when you're at another show <laughs> and people come up to you and say, I can't wait for your show. I'm saving my money. Yeah. There's like, I cannot wait for your show. It's the show I look forward to all year. I yeah. mean, I get and uh, Yeah, it's, 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 it's the same thing in the store, right? Yeah, yeah. I hear it every, every day. For yeah, yeah, all the time. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. So it's that, and that's the thing, it's that build up and it's that anticipation and it's special and it's, it's, you know, I've had people say, you need to do it again, do it in the beginning of the year, do it at the end of the year. Nah. Like, I like the build up. It's yeah. like Christmas. Right. You wait all year, start saving your money. So I, you're going to find what you need. It'll be there. I, <laughs> Somebody may get it before you, but it'll be there. No, that, that's happened yeah. a few times, you know, just the, I'm like, where's that? Th oh, sold. Sold. Gone. I was gonna come back, but uh, it's not a museum. Should have. But I, got I, it when I saw it. Well, yeah. Right? But I, it's, it's like, I already know that because we see it at the shop all the time. But I was like, I went to get this one thing and it was gone, and I was like, yeah. 
Somebody else in the room wanted it too. I should have known. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's, I mean, like, honestly, like you can't hesitate yeah. because like, if you see something that's say X amount of dollars and you want to walk around and see if one, someone else has the same thing cheaper, it just get it. Yeah. I, I've always said if the price is right, if it's fair. Right. Cause I've done enough shows in my life and I was like, well, I'm going to walk, you know, this is what I'm looking for. And there's one. But you know what? I might find it. But I mean, if you kind of are hunting something and you already know the price range it's in, and mm -hmm. if it's reasonably priced, just, just be, get it. Just, just get, get it. it. Yeah. Be done because then you're going to regret it. Because right. I've, I've had that happen way too many times. So yep. I don't. I don't hesitate. Yeah. What are some good tips for somebody who's never been to retro? Book a room. Book a room. Get there early. Uh, I mean. VIP, talk to people vip preview night like talk to everybody oh yeah you, you'll never you never know what you'll find out right there's stuff where we've had conversations with people about different things things we're interested in and you learn something and we we see this kind of thing every we deal with it all the time i still learn oh yeah things and at, at retro too because like you just you have no idea what somebody has what they're bringing what they know what they can share talk. you'll see things you've never seen before yeah yeah You'll make friends yeah. easily. But, I'm, you know, another thing I'd say is if you don't see something, ask. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it could be under the table. It could be under the table because something sells. They, you know, Re put yeah. something else Restock. out. Yeah. Or it's in their room. Or, or, they or, they, or they know someone that's there yeah. that may have that item. Yeah. That's right. I've done that because I'm pinballing all exactly. around the room. And somebody came in, they were looking for Shogun. And I was like, I'll show you. Because I'm helping the vendor. I want them to do well. Right. Like, I want you to make a lot of money so you come back. Uh, and I mean, I've had vendor, you know, yeah, I don't want to. I was going to say, I could throw out some crazy numbers that I know some of the vendors have made. And it's just, you know, in a 10 by 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're bringing good stuff. Everyone there, yes, they're making money. But they're having fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, hands it's down. not. No, no one's like. Well, it's good money. Like no, people are enjoying themselves at every every aspect. Whether you're buying, you're selling, you're promoting. I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard people go up to Ryan, "Thank you for letting me just oh, watch yeah. a door." Or, yeah, right. Which That's to me is like I I felt bad we couldn't give you something else, but it was fun because they talked to people coming in. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I, it, the 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 guests, they all have fun. They. They give people stuff. Right. They're just happy to be there. They're like, once you get in the room and the it's like it's like it's like you said, a, a mood kind of spreads. And then everyone's happy. Yep. And then you're eating in the restaurant and so and so would be there. You get in the elevator, maybe skeletors in the elevator with you. you right. know, yeah. Depending on who the guests were year by year. And it's like somebody's running into everybody every which way and they're and it's, it's, you know, it's not even a VIP experience. It's just, I'm having breakfast and so is, what's his name right next to me? Yeah, it's like right. Larry Kenny Lino or it's just right there. It's, you know, Arthur Burghardt is Destro and he's right over there. Yep. And it's just, it's just, it's not like they're scurried away into their car and they're off to their hotel and right. don't go past the turn, the ropes. They're just they're mingling. Yeah, they're at the they're, lobby they're swap. They'll yeah. be in the rooms. I can't stress enough how much fun it is to meet the guests, even guests where it's like, I don't necessarily have an interest in what they do or what they're involved in, but I'll just, I'll just go talk to them for a minute. And then you, you, they, you just have a normal conversation and then they tell you a story. Yep. Well, I some think of those stories I just love. Like the, I, I think the atmosphere, them. because it's so different than yeah. I think what they're traditionally used to that they feel more relaxed. And yeah. Just, I mean, like they have that, you know, I guess the banter back and forth with the people, whereas some shows they may just be like signing, go sign. Yeah. They're go. moving you along. Right. You along. Like cattle. We just, you know, yeah. Here they take time to, you know, Hey Travis, nice to meet you. You know, da, 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 da. thank you for this. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah, I'm, you know, thank you for being a fan. Like they, yeah, they generally, like care about talking to you well they i mean i think in some like you were talking about other shows and not to disparage any other shows but 
if it's a, a large, large show, there's no time to take that. Exactly. Well, it's it's almost like I always like to think something becomes too corporate. Right. It's just too big. And it doesn't mean, you know, San Diego's humongous. New York's humongous. C2E2, they're humongous shows. And you'll make a lot of money as a vendor there. But like you said, that guest cannot spend that amount of time. Right. right. Yeah. And right. they may not even look at you because you're dealing with a handler and they're passing the photo. Mm -hmm. And they got, and then they just see this line for miles they just got it they got to process the line and it's, well they're they're trying not to let people down but at the same time because of the demand that's there it's you, you kind of have to let them down somewhat because you can't have that personal interaction you can't and you know another key thing is we limit the amount of gas yeah right. because i've learned from a vendor standpoint too many sucks all the money out of the room yeah and then your vendors don't make money and i've always come from a vendor mentality that what's best for the vendor and it's because then and then I don't take people out of the room for photo ops because and it doesn't mean it doesn't work for other people I don't like it personally yeah because if you take the guests out of the room that means you take that person out of the room who's waiting for that guest or for that photo op and now they're not in there looking at your vendors spending right. money right. yeah so it's 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 just all these little things that I just personally don't like is what I omitted from this show and I think it works. So, you know, throughout the weekend, you know, R Ryan will delegate what everyone kind of does. So at one point it was like, hey, can you go hang out with friends? Watch out for a while. Cool. I get to hang out with Shredder. <laughs> go. And Quick Kick. And Quick Kick. So, and the Tick, right? Yeah. It's the dad yep. on the Tick. Yeah. So anyways, go hang out with him. Just start talking to him. He's very chill. Very cool. Uh, just you know, you know, uh, man, how cool was it to be Shredder? You know, it's really, really, really awesome that you were Shredder. And I'm like, you ever, you know, kind of take something from the, the movie and take it home? And he's like, man, he's like, I didn't have the foresight back then to do that kind of thing. And he's like, wearing that armor. He's like, one, I wasn't sneaking out of there. And two, it was so damn heavy. I didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, you know, I was like wearing a metal hamper on my head for, you know, laundry. <laughs> he was the nicest guy. Yeah, he was, oh, he yeah. was very no, cool. He was great. Yeah. He was great. But I mean, every one of those people, I mean, you're sitting with them and, you know, in between you're talking and they're just normal. Like they're, they're real people that want to talk to you that yeah, me. it's just, it's cool. You know, you meet some of your childhood heroes or yeah. you know and it's like oh they are they are real people yeah they helped contribute to you know or you know when skeletor alan oppenheimer yeah i was sitting uh next to him for a little while and not really a, a fun story but kind of a cool thing um someone came up and he was like you know oh man skeletor greatest villain ever you know da 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 da, da. and he's like for skeletor to be like a a dead looking person that he was like, you were the liveliest character on that show. And <laughs> it, it was, like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's just something that stick, you know, yeah. it's just, well, like, it makes sense. Yeah. And you know, he, uh, Alan the whole weekend was doing voicemails on people's phones and <laughs> it was just, it was nuts. Yeah. He was, I mean, everybody we've had has been so nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I he signed my ride along Battle Cat, you know, the big hoppy thing. Like yeah, the kids yeah, yeah. Said it's I only, had one. <laughs> says I've only since the second one I've ever signed. Oh, that's cool. But who's traveling with this giant <laughs> thing? I could do it because it's here and it's my show, and I just put it in the truck. But it's I, hollow. It's fragile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think one of the cool things that happened, like, so I I have a table set up at the show. And, and I sell art and uh, I, I knew that, you know, we were having the turtles, of course. And because I'm I don't Ryan tells me everything. So I, I don't keep track of everything. He's like, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Michelangelo is the voice of the tick. And I'm like, the tick. I love the tick. So I drew uh, a tick and then had it on my table because like, well, 
it'll sell. But also my excuse was that I get to draw the tick. I haven't drawn the tick since I was a kid. So, and then at some point, I, I don't even know. It might have been, it might have been you or Craig or some some. I, I was busy. I don't know. Somebody brought Townsend over, and he s- said he'd been seeing these turtle prints that I'd done, and he wanted to come meet me. and And he took time away from his table to come see me. And I, you know, I didn't know what to say. I mean, I wasn't. I don't really get starstruck, but it was like I'm not thinking about anything. To, to say to him. So I'm, I'm just like, Oh, it's great to meet you. And dumbfounded. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you came to my table. Yeah. And then he bought the tick off my table and said he wanted me to sign it. And then he took pictures with me. Yeah. That's cool. And, yeah, that's cool. Right? Yeah. It was like, <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't, but he was having a lot of fun and, and it just, it made me feel really, really good. Yeah. They were all so cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Party, but, party dudes. <laughs> But I'm trying to think. So I'm trying to think of the, the anything pe- crazy. All right. So the, the the pizza was so good that year. And I got maybe three bites because <laughs> we were busy. There was a guy buying a bunch of stuff. So I barely made it in time before the pizza was like getting, you know, thrown away or whatever. So, so is this Friday stuff. pizza party? Yeah. Yeah. Friday. So I, I get the pizza. I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten anything like all day. So I take like three bites and then I'm talking, I'm talking to Matt and a few other people. And I don't remember what we were talking about, but it was some, some information that I I'm sharing that no one, no one else knew. And so I, I spit it all out, s- tell the story. And I had the pizza behind me and I reached behind me to grab the pizza and the, the plate's gone. And I turn around and look, I look everywhere. And all I see is the, staff guy carrying a bag of trash and like took my pizza <laughs> so then i had to get, andy had some frozen pizza no it was homemade well it was homemade but it was in the freezer oh, right? yeah no it was in the refrigerator in the room well okay it was I cold frozen i was gonna say who has a freezer right i don't know uh no there was a, a freezer tiny freezer the, uh, uh, tiny freezer but anyway okay in the fridge so i ate cold pizza and it was really good <laughs> thanks but not as good as those three <laughs> bites of that warm pizza and then you lost my cup too. I bought you another one. <laughs> I just know I hear all the stuff that I missed because yeah. I'm running around doing mm-hmm. stuff. Oh, yeah. It's like you should have seen what some guy just dumped like his whole closet on the floor in the lobby. Yeah. And yeah. It was just nuts. Yeah. It was like Arco, Castle, Otherworld. Like it was just, and I'm like in the VIP meet and greet and I'm like trying to pull me out. And yeah. I was like, I, I well, to be fair, and I run out and I'm seeing all this stuff, and then I see all these people already around it, and I was like, "It's just not where yeah, it's, it's over." It's let them have it. Well, it started early, right? It always starts early. Well, so yeah. as soon as one brings a bin, it it's on. Well, they got to get I mean, they're getting their spots for the floor, right? And, yeah. Right. Well, it's organically growing because lobby swap was technically just Saturday. Yeah, but <laughs> but then it happened on Friday anyway. Yeah, that's which is the, fine. That's the impromptu one, but yeah. it's not the official one. Right, right, right. Well, it just yeah, it just it just happened. But then there's uh, parking lot swaps. Yeah. You know, oh, <laughs> guys yeah. walking in with a defiant. Somebody gets it on the way in. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even make it to the lobby. <laughs> that's the way it goes. So there's people You'll camping out outside. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. You don't even know what you missed, right. and you still are getting good stuff. I'm sure there's things that that we don't know. I was gonna say how much stuff have we missed. Yeah, just I had just, a guy with a case of jumbo turtles that was supposed to sell it to me, and he's walking oh, yeah. to bring it to me, and he got he got so overwhelmed by everybody <gasps> hounding him. <laughs> oh, okay. And I see another guy walking with it, and I go, "What?" And I run to the guy, and I was like, "Where's my what? Do, what did you just do?" And he's like, "Ah, I just <laughs> think I just couldn't handle like he just could." And I was like, what? "No was turtles like, for Ryan." I was like, oh, you're killing me. I give him a hard time about it every time. But he's like, don't worry, there's another set. <laughs> that's in a sealed case, though. That one. That's yeah, it. that's the one you want. That's in. Yeah. Graded in case. Uncirculated. <laughs> I mean, Let's talk room, about the G2 room. Yeah, the, I mean, the craziest. That was bonkers. The craziest yeah. room. And I didn't even see all of the rooms because yeah. then it's like, I got to get up early because I'm running a show. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't just. But I was. There was one room. The guy tried to get a vending spot. He couldn't. I encouraged him to get a room, do the lobby swap, do the room trade. And 
I swear, and I'm not exaggerating, there was a, like a thousand G1 and G2 Transformers sealed. I mean, yeah. And how much of that stuff, like, have we never seen? Oh, yeah. Sealed, let alone. We don't get G2 much loose. at all. Right. Right. But now his G1s were priced. There was no meat on the bone yeah. for us to make any money. Yeah. But his G2s were reasonable. Right. Right. And so if you bought a bundle. Right. But the crazy thing was, say it was just the jets or it was the cars. There was like six of them laid out and it looked like that was a set. So then you'd say, well, I want to buy this whole set. You got 300 on it. Would you do 250 or whatever it was? He's right. like, well, how many sets do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Because he had, yeah, he had more Multiple, under the table. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was bonkers. So I was like, well, I'll take three sets. There were, I mean, just, I mean, what? I stuff I never saw in the box. Yeah. I mean, blue Grimlock, teal Grimlock. Like, and then it was kids' costumes, watches. Yeah. It was the tchotchke stuff. Yeah. A like Action Master box sets that I didn't know existed outside of the guide. Yeah. I never saw the box art. And there it is. It's crisp. It's perfect. Or like what some of the... The Beast Wars. Oh, yeah, the Beast Wars. That were different metallic colors that, like, oh, yeah. you... Wasn't some of them European or yeah, something? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, colors, like, we've never... Who ended up buying me that watch? <laughs> I, think was, I think it was Austin. Was it Austin? I think so, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. This guy sure. had, like, it, was it what was it a Ultra Magnus watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was in the blister? Yep. It's, it's a big, long package and the watches in it yeah heat yep. sealed on the edges and he had like a thousand dollars on it because there was none he just threw up a high crazy number cause <laughs> yeah because you could, could you couldn't you couldn't find couldn't one, one. there's yeah. no comps there was no nothing and then we go to the next room we leave him in that room and we're in the next room and then here <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't pay that right right yeah. he because he, brett got in the room oh man and was tearing oh, the yeah. like yeah that was great like that beating him up but he was like well you're fine on that but that you're too high and then he's i think right. he ended up getting it for 300 bucks yeah oh wow it was cool though but i mean that room was amazing yeah, yeah. Man, i mean ton i mean there was java sail barges and uh the mail away hasbro slaughter but it was the ljn yeah, uh, one yeah. yeah or it I looks want, like ljn but it's yeah. the hasbro one i yeah, mean there was crazy I, stuff i wanted that <laughs> i wanted that yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, guys uh, and gals, thank you for watching. Comment, subscribe, go to Retro. Get your tickets November 17th through the 19th. Book a room. You'll have fun. <laughs>